I'm so excited to be joined by Catherine Fallis. She is a master sommelier. She has a brand new book out called 10 Grapes to Know. You picked out three grapes that you thought we should know for this interview because we ain't got time for 10. Sorry, Catherine. <laughs> got to buy the book for that one. Uh, and you picked three wines to go with it. So Pinot Grigio is very well known and it's considered pretty neutral and it, it is fruit neutral but the better Pinot Grigios actually have a lot of personality but they're not demanding your attention they're kind of like an Ed Sheeran song it's pleasant it's in the background it can make you smile but it doesn't demand that you listen to it like a German opera I have to go and understand everything it's really easy going and I love that now a lot of my fellow master psalms are like oh, Pinot Grigio you know and I'm like but sometimes I want a wine that doesn't demand my attention at the end of a long day and I love Pinot Grigio for that. So one of my picks in the under 20 section is uh, the Hofstadter, um, and it's from Alto Adige, an area you know very well. Sure, of course, yeah. So in uh, northern Italy, it's really clean and pure and uh, minerally and lemony. It's just fresh and dry and neutral, yeah. <laughs> but interesting. Okay, everyone, all you Pinot Grigio lovers out there, but I like the way you say it. Say it how you say it fancy, Pinot Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio. <laughs> All you Pinot Grigio lovers Pino out Grigio. there, Master Sommelier <laughs> Catherine Fallis says you're allowed to drink Pinot Grigio. Of course, I have to include Pinot Noir. Uh, there's not a sommelier that I know that doesn't have a love affair with Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir is just so alluring. It's so feminine, but it's so powerful. It's so um, magical and earthy and perfumey and it's also a very delicate wine like Pinot Grigio. It's delicate and it's kind of dialed back so that you can really enjoy it with the most ethereal dishes. So if you're in a nice restaurant having a very kind of complex dish, this is a great wine to have because it doesn't mask the dish. It's not like hitting it over the head with a hammer. It's like it's very kind of in the background just kind of gently carrying that dish along and making it better. And, and sommeliers love that. I love that. This is from New Zealand. This is the Mount Beautiful from North Canterbury in the South Island of New Zealand, um, which is known, New Zealand is known for these really kind of uh, colorful and vibrant and flashy Sauvignon Blancs, which are delicious and refreshing and engaging. Their Pinot Noirs from New Zealand are a little bit more in the European style, more like red burgundy, for example, French Pinot Noir. So they're not so ripe and they're certainly not oaky. And they have this nice tart kind of cranberry, pomegranate, crunchy acidity, which makes them really lovely and refreshing. Um, and they make your mouth water and they're delicious with things like pizza with mushrooms, you know, very simple uh, earthy dishes, uh, all the way to the most complex dish. But I'm a huge fan of the New Zealand wines in particular because uh, this one is not under 20, it's $25, but something equivalent from California or from France would be 50 or $75. And this one also has a screw cap. Oh, well, uh, we <laughs> love a screw cap, makes it easier to get to. And it's interesting that you should say a Pinot Noir because uh, that's under $50. Because the question I get a lot is, what's a good Pinot for under 30 bucks? And I'm always going like, I don't know, I'm gonna have to do some research on yeah. that. So Zinfandel, this is like America's sweetheart grape because it, it, while it's not indigenous to America, we do it better than anyone else in the world. We can safely say that. So Zinfandel thrives, especially in certain pockets of California. And and there are a lot of really uh, amazing Zinfandel vineyards that go back over a hundred years. Lodi makes some of yeah. the best sure, yeah. Zinfandels in the world. Yeah. There are a lot of other areas of the state as well, but I'm a particular fan of the Moore Fry Ranch. The Moore Fry Ranch is a father-son operation planted in 1901. So that's how old the vines are that make the Zinfandel that's in this bottle. This bottle of old vine Zinfandel is so complex. It's not this tutti fruity kind of fun, cotton candy, fruity, jammy Zinfandel, which people love. This is not that at all. It's more, it's, um, uh, it's, it's mysterious. It's got all of these different flavors that you wouldn't expect. It just kind of keeps opening up as you let it sit in your glass and it just gives you more and more and more character over time. And it's so undervalued because it's $18 a bottle. Oh my gosh. So Why? It's, it's How, not taking 50, 60, 70. Yeah. Even a hundred. I'm glad it's not. Yeah, sure. As are we. You should yeah. be all yeah. glad it's not yeah. either, but this is such a complex wine and it really represents what the greatest vineyards in America can do. This was so much fun and people can get your book where? In your local independent bookstore. I love this. In your local <laughs> independent bookstore. Thank you, Monique. This has been so much fun. Thank Cheers. you. It's always great to see you.